Baruch Hashem, find yourself, pal. Baruch Hashem. Rivka, also? Baruch Hashem, yeah. Baruch Hashem, okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, can we start? Yeah, okay, it is nine o'clock. Uh, please start. Let's see. Okay. Um, there is a minhag of the uh, Ashkenazi Jews of Western Europe, otherwise known as the Yetis, that at the conclusion of Mariv on the first night of Pesach, they greet each other with, in, uh, with an additional greeting, not only good yontif, but bauen sie gut. Bauen sie gut, translated into simple English, is build well. So the question is, what exactly are we wishing uh, each other? Building? Uh, we're not going to go out with a, you know, a brick, brick laying or anything like that on Yom Tov. Um, there are some who say that this is a reference to the Pismon, we sing at the end of the Seder, Hail B'nai, Hail B'nai Beis Chavakorot. We are saying, Bounzi Gut, we're going to do something to contribute to the rebuilding of the Beis Hamikdosh. But it still doesn't tell us very clearly what exactly how this is going to be achieved. We have many mitzvahs on Seder night. Some of them are the Oraisa in Atira, and some of them are Midra Bonon. The two which are Midra Oraisa are Achilas Matzah, right? There are two mitzvahs of eating matzah. One mitzvah is Al Matzos Moroim Yoichluhu. You need to eat Korban Pesach together with matzah and mora. And that unfortunately we don't have because we don't have a Korban Pesach. But there's another mitzvah called the Bo'erev Toichu Matzis. On the night of the 15th of Nisan, we should eat matzis. That's all, that is a mitzvah deraisa that we do have nowadays. The other mitzvah deraisa that we have is Sipur Yitzias Mitzrayim. Sipur means telling the story of Yitzias Mitzrayim. It's a mitzvah asay deraisa. Let's take a look at what the Rambam has to say about this mitzvah. This mitzvah deraisa, which you're going to find out it's not only a chiv on men, it's a chiv on women as well, even though it's a time bar mitzvah, a mitzvah aseh shaz man gromo, but this particular one, noshim chayovos, the women are chayov, and I, I'm, I'm going to make this point already at the beginning of this year, the ladies are chayov, that means however thorough your Pesach cleaning is, however much you cook lichvoid yontuf, for simchas yontuf, you're mechuyev to stay awake, during the Seder and participate in the mitzvah of Sipur Yitzhak Mitzvah. Okay, um, so if you need to make sure the coffee is ready. Says the Rambam, Perek Zayin Halacha Aleph Mirchus Chomit Mitzvah. Mitzvahs Asei Shel Torah Lesape Benisim Benitlois Shenasu Lavo Yisini BeMitzrayim. It's a mitzvah. I say Minha to uh, tell the, the story of the Nisim the, Veniploys, the miracles and the wonders that uh, happened to our forefathers in Mitzrayim. The date is the 15th of Nisan. Shenema, and his apostles to teach us this. Zorchoi es hayoim haze, remember this day, Asheyotsosem mi Mitzrayim, that you came out of Egypt. Now, how do I know that the word Zohar refers to prepare? You have to say something. Zohar means you remember. Can you remember in your mind? That's good enough? No, it's not good enough. You have to actually speak it out. Says the Rambam, well, there's another occasion where we find Zohar meaning speak it out, say something. Now, there's a mitzvah of Kiddush. When it comes to Shabbos, we have to make Kiddush. It's a chiyuv deraisa, min ha A person has to say, make kiddush. How does he make kiddush? Does he think today is Shabbos? No. He has to say the words of kiddush. He has to say, today is Shabbos. There is, um, it's, it's, uh, they say about the Vilna Gon, the Vilna Gon was very makpid, very careful, and he came home from shul on uh, Friday night, on Leo uh, Shabbos, to wish his wife good Shabbos. Why we say much so much? You should show and buy it. You really want to do. Obviously, you, when you come home from Shul, don't you wish your wife good job? That's only obvious. Yes, but he had another kavanah. 
and another intention here. That is like this. It, once you've mentioned with your mouth, you've spoken out the words, today is Shabbos. And you said it in your tefillah, Mekadesh HaShabbos, today is Shabbos. You, men, have already been yet to the mitzvah of Kiddush, Min HaToyah. Min HaToyah, the Torah says, Zohar is in my Shabbos, look at Joy. Zohar, remember it, remember it, prepare with your mouth. Speak it out, say, today is Shabbos. Okay? The wife's view is also, Zohar Vashonah, the Dibu Echod. Anybody who's hired to keep Shabbos, to not to do any Malach on Shabbos, is also hired to keep the mitzvah of Shabbos of Kiddush. So the husband comes home from school, he doesn't marry. He mentioned he's already been Yoitza Kiddush, Min HaToyah. The wife, perhaps she didn't have married, she didn't have a chance to, to have married yet. Okay, so a is still min So the, the rule is, somebody's got a high achiyuv cannot be moitzi, somebody's got a low achiyuv. So the husband, who's got a achiyuv only mid rabbonon to be makadesh a la kois on the cup of wine, he cannot be moitzi his, his wife, who's got a achiyuv deraisa. But, says the Bill of if you come home, and you, say, you say good Shabbos to your wife, so your wife will also answer good Shabbos. By saying good Shabbos, she's already been Yoitza, the mitzvah, the writer of Kiddush. And then you're both uh, on the same level, you're both equal, you're both a Chayat the Rabbonon, you can be Yoitza her with your Kiddush. So what do we see from here? The, the Zohar here is mentioning the Peh. Similarly, in the same way as Zohar, as Yod Shabbos, the Kajoy, refers to mentioning, speaking it out, today is Shabbos. So there's also a, 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 a mitzvah, I say, minhatur, to speak it out, to say, talk about with your mouth the, the, uh, the nisim and the niflois that happen to have our father of the mitzvah. Okay. So how do I know that Zomachim is in this one? Talmud Loima, the Gadol Abincho by Yim Hahu. The Possum says, you should tell your son on that day. Lemo is saying, but I was there because of this. This is something we actually say in Haggadah. It's at the time when matzah and mora are placed in front of you. Now, you could say, well, I can create such a feel. I take a piece of matzah, I take a matzah, I take a piece of mora, put it in front of me. Okay, now I've got the circumstances for the mitzvah of the No, no. The pshat is when there's a heel of deep matzah and mora. And that's on the, the, the night of the 50s. Um, now, says the Rambam, you might ask a question. The Possum says, You're meant to tell your son. What happens if you don't have a son? Or your son's not with you? Even though he hasn't got a, a son. Okay. He's also part of our God. Even somebody, if we say in Haggadah, we all uh, clever people. We're on the void, we understand. We know the Torah. We know the entire Torah. Mitzvah alein le sarpeh b'tzias mitzrayim. We have a mitzvah to talk about yitzias mitzrayim. That's the Ramba. V'chol ha-marbe, v'chol ha-mari, v'dvarim sh'iru, v'shahayu harei zeh meshuba. Nobody who speaks at length about what happened. Uh, and we went on then, Harize Meshuba. He is praiseworthy. Now, the Lushan, the wording, the Mishnah, the wording in the Hagod is, Marbe means he says a lot. He is saying, He speaks at great length, in detail. Harize Meshuba. He is praiseworthy. So, to understand what the Rambam means by Speaking a, a, a lot, having more and more things to say about your tzitzim trying. Um, why is he so praiseworthy? What's so wonderful about him? So I heard the following explanation, and I also uh, understand there's a, an alternative version here. Harize yoiser toy. He's a better person. Let's give a marshal. You're invited to Shabbos dinner somewhere. And the hostess, the lady of the house, she prepared, prepares a very nice gourmet meal, six courses, everything's wonderful. Like the, 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 the fish, 
really it's something I, you know, you've never seen anything swim like this. And the soup, the tneidlach, etc. Every course is a work of art. All right. So as you leave, you say, thank you very much for the meal. Are you ungrateful? No. You said it, thank you very much. But if you go into the details, thank you so much for the fish that fish was, and the soup was, and the tneidlach were, and the, uh, the meat was, and the vegetables, and the kugel, and the, the afters. Every detail. Harizim Shubach, that's praiseworthy, but it also shows something about you, about the person who's speaking. The person who's speaking and is able to find so much to say about what he received. He finds so much to praise the other person for. That shows how much he is an appreciated person. He's a person who uh, 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 understands all the fine points. And that shows me he's a better person. Harizim Mishuvah, he's a better person because he's able to discern all these little points, all these little bits of attention that the, his hostess gave to the fine meal that he served. So we also say here, we're here on Seder night to show our gratitude to our college of And when we're able on Seder night to find another point and another detail and another, another s s a small point that people uh, perhaps didn't uh, uh, notice, we are showing that we are better, we are more appreciated to our college of for the Nisim and for us he did for us. Okay. The Rambam doesn't stop it. After Halacha Aleph comes Halacha Beis. Mitzvah lohidia leboni. There's a mitzvah to let the children know. Ba'afilu lo'ishalu. Even if they didn't ask. As we all know, the Torah talks about four different types of sons, types of Yidin. There's a Chochem, the Rosha, Okay, so the Rama starts off with the last category. He doesn't know how to ask. He doesn't even know there's something to ask about. You are meant to take the initiative. There's a mitzvah. You must tell your son. Does your son have to ask a question first? No, he doesn't have to ask a question. Though, Lemaisa, the Seder should go. Derech Sheilo Tshuva, as we're going to see later on. Uh, your question and answer is the way to arouse the interest of all those people who are sitting at the same there in what we're discussing. We're talking about the Yitzhak Mitzrayim. Every question is actually a challenge. And people enjoy living up to challenges. There's a question here. No, what's the answer? Perhaps I know the answer. Perhaps I can suggest an answer. Perhaps I, will, I can't suggest an answer, and then we're wanting to hear from somebody else that they can explain what's, what's going on. So, the Maisa, this is the children's night. It's, they have uh, priority. We want to be gathered for the Bincha. Um, the Fi Daito Shoben of his Malando. Is the Rambam, the way you're meant to teach your son, it's a night of teaching your children. And it all depends on where's your child holding? What's his level of intelligence? What's his level of understanding? His level of appreciation? Make sure that the way you, you explain it to him is tuned and fine tuned to his capabilities, to what he, he thinks is, is, is important. Take son. Is the Rambam, I'll give you an example. In Hoyal Cotton Oitipes. He's either a very young child whose intelligence hasn't developed. Or Tipesh is slightly foolish. He hasn't, unfortunately, he's not, he's not so clever. Um Aloy, Bini. He says, like my son, you should just know what, what, what happened over there in Mitzrayim. Kulanu Hoyinu Avodim. Kumoy Shifchazov. Kutme Ebedze. We're assuming, you know. We know what a slave is like, what a, a, a female slave is like. But we see servants, people you know, who serve. Uh, we, don't, we don't see that so much nowadays. But I remember Rav Moshe Shrab telling me that when they, that he was in Lithuania learning the yeshivas, see the Goisha maids, they wouldn't sit on a chair, they sat on the floor because they knew their place. So, uh, 
the way somebody who's subservient, a servant behaves, is they are, in English we call it subservient, they're humble, they obey, they feel lowly. On this night, redeemed us, suddenly we became free. Oh, so that's something on a simple level, which a simple person can appreciate. We, we used to have to, you know, every we were frightened the whole time, we were, we were uh, scared the whole time, we had to make sure that we didn't uh, disappoint our, our master, we were there to uh, obey the instructions straight away, etc., etc. We were limited in what we can do. And suddenly we were free. Oh, free, that's good. That's wonderful. That's what this, the simple person can appreciate. It says the Rambam, what happens if we have here somebody, Rimhoyar Ben, Godoy Vachokhem, Godly is not a cotton, and Chokhem is a, a clever boy, a wise person. It seems it's the repetition. What does he say? You have to let him know what happened in Mitzrayim and the Nisim, which were made through Moshe Rabbeinu. That means when you explain, you may be talking about the same facts, but you'll be going into greater detail. You'll be understanding what this showed the purpose of Hashem, how he, he runs the world, what was the, how the, there was a punishment here for the Mitzrim, measure for measure. All these details are something which a Chochem can appreciate, somebody who thinks more deeply, who has greater knowledge, who has a greater mental uh, capacity. Okay? So that's the Gadot Labincha. Mitzvah is the Gadot Labincha. Yeah, you don't have a son there, you speak to yourself. I suppose you have to speak to yourself according to your, your own understanding. Now, Ramana again hasn't finished. He says, okay, Mitzvah to talk about Yitzhak Mitzrayim, focus on the children, each one according to his, uh, his level. But sorry, you have to do something unusual today. So the, the, the children will see, and they're going to start asking questions. You have to positively arouse their interest. What's going on here? What's going on at the, at the, at the Seder? The way the, 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 the table's laid is unusual. What's this big plate in the middle with all these unusual things on there? The salt water and, and the carapace and, the, and the, 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 this bone and this egg. What's, what are they all doing there? Mani, Shtana, Halayla, Azeni, Kalayla. How different it is. Things are different. Once again, the focus is on the, on, on the children. Arouse their interest. You have to do what you can to get them interested, to get them involved. It's not just reading the Haggadah and singing the songs. It's an active, we call it an interactive experience. You shall be hearing they will ask and they'll say, Manish to Allah, Allah, Zimbi, to Allah, how different it is. That's the main point. The main point is the first sentence. How different. And then the child notices this difference, that difference. They say that. But the main thing is the child should be encouraged to show interest. And we should also show interest. So the, the father or the leader of the Seder has to explain to them. Answer, and all your questions are going to be asked. The Ketan Meshane, the Ram also explains, I'll repeat the Gemara in uh, Avib Sochim, Machalik Lem Klois Vegoizim. You uh, distribute, Klois are like uh, parched corn, parched uh, wheat, and they go in with nuts, like, uh, candy, sweets, is good. The certain stage of the Seder, you take the Seder plate. You move, you, you move it to the other end of the table, take it away. Take it away? We haven't eaten anything yet. Do surprising things. Arouse the children's interest and make sure that they stay awake the whole time. And we, we grab matzah from each other, the mitzvah of stealing the achikaymon. 
Why is there a mitzvah to be happy to aim on? That seems to be fitting with, with you know, celebrating Yitzhak's Mitzrayim. The answer is, believe you me, that keeps the children's interest awake, right? Um, if my own experience with children, and I work with, with, with grandchildren, um, you know, if you try and make sure that the uh, <laughs> that equipment stays with you, but the, the children are always like, uh, you know, Abba Saba, would you like to perhaps uh, you wash your hands? Why are you washing your hands? You're drying your hands, suddenly you, you grab it from behind you. Right. Um, what's the whole idea? The idea is to keep the children awake and interested. We would make every effort. Okay, you answer with the right way. <laughs> the Ram doesn't close the door. The Ram doesn't say it has to be this way. You can devise other ways of arousing the, the, the children's interest and keeping them interested. It's just a couple together. The wife can ask her husband. He's got no wife. Then a few people, men together, or women together, they ask each other. And the Maisa, it seems it's very important that there are questions asked. We don't just read facts. We ask questions because the way to keep interest alive is to create these challenges by means of questions. Even if it was a chachm, you still ask the same old questions. Were you past that? No. We have to ask the questions. The answers that we give may be of a different quality last year from the previous year. They may be, the, a, 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 again, the same answer, but in a deeper understanding. Sorry, even if the person's just by himself on Saturday night, he asks himself because even he's asking himself, he asks the question that gives him a challenge and gives him incentive to give an answer. They say about Rebel Yoshi that he, he seemed to be learning by himself, but they say really and truly he was learning by Chavrusa. How can you learn by yourself and also be learning with somebody? Whenever there was a question, he used to ask the question. He asked himself the question and he gave himself the answers if there were two separate people. But that's also the way you, an individual, if a person ever in the situation where he's by himself on the on Saturday night, he asks himself a question, he creates the challenge for himself, and he gives himself the answer. And that's completely different, very different from just stating the facts. Stating the facts is something which and pass over a person's head, you know, it doesn't pay so much interest. There's not so much, so much attention to it. But if it's something where you, you're the question, the question you, you ask yourself, you're already interested. Okay. So, a lot of dollars. But so it has to be gnus and the same You have to start talking about gnus, the negative side, and the same bishvah, and end with. The Sheva. Praise. Hate sad. How does that work out? Maschil, Masape, Shibitrilla, Hoyu, Avesenu, be made Terach. You start by saying, you know, our forefathers in the time of Terach, Milpono, and in the generations previous to that, Koyfri, they were heretics. They deny the existence of our Korifoku. But Toyin Acha Hebel, we're going after empty matters. But right from Afaway de Zora, they say. Run after Afaway de Zora. Messiah, the Daso Emes. And then we end off by saying, Achshav Kervonu ha Mokum Loi. A Kushbu is now Lavoy de Osoi. A Kushbu has now drawn us near to him. Vidilonim in Asoi. He separated us from those who were strained. The Kervonu Li Chudo. He has brought us close to being. Uh, to knowing that he's the only half of the world. Maral says in, in, uh, in his parish on Haggadah, he says, you know, if you're looking at the, the daylight, very nice, it's good to have nice, 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 nice sunny day. But imagine you've been traveling through a dark tunnel and at the end of the tunnel, there's suddenly the light, that light, it's much more beautiful. It makes much more of an impression upon you. You want to talk about how great 
Tzal Yisrael are, with the great favor HaKadosh Baruch did for them, then explain about their background. We were Avodim. We were Avodim Zara. We said Avodim Zara. Our forefathers were Avodim Zara. And now HaKadosh Baruch Hu was brought us near. We're now selling Hashem. The truth is, there's a machlekes between Rav and Shmuel. But what's masculine between Muslim and Messiah Bishvach? Turn to Rav, what, what the, uh, that's what the Ramram quotes here. Uh, we, we're saying <coughs> that you first say we used to be out of the Zara. And now, Akash Baruch Hu has shown us the Emes. We're no longer out of the Zara, we're now a Abde Hashem. According to Shmuel, Shmuel says we were avodim. We physically uh, we were slaves. We subjugated, we humiliated by our masters then and then in its own. We had to work hard the whole time. And it was we were relentless. They, the whole day, the work became harder. The type of work we, we, we had to do was men had to do women's work, women had to do men's work. And it changed every 30 days. And if you just thought you were getting used to sewing men, they, they, they now give you a different type of work. I don't know, leading the dough. Life was very hard. Okay. Avodim Hoyinu. We were Avodim. Physical Avodim. Physical slaves. Now, of course, we let, let us free. He freed us. So Maral explains, he says, you know, uh, what's worse? Is spiritual bondage or physical bondage worse? So Rav says, spiritual bondage, spiritual slaves, being slaves to Avodah Zorah, that's worse. Why? Because Akash Baruch Hu says, the Avadati, if his presence serves Avodah Zorah, Akash Baruch Hu is going to completely destroy it. Nefesh Ahi, that presence in the Shama. Serving Avodah Zorah leads to complete destruction for a person. That's worse. Moral says, no. You have to understand a person has got a goof. And if a person feels downtrodden and he feels worthless, he feels that he's, he's got no life of, of his own, that's worse. That's a, a, a harsher feeling. It seems we, now when we say the Haggadah, we mention both of them. We mention the double shibud, the spiritual shibud, the Dabu the Zoro around us, we used to be able to have the Zoro, and who brought us near, and the physical uh, uh, shibud as well. And both of them, we were released from its shrine, a Kosh Baruch took us out from there. So the Raman continues. We were slaves to power in the And all the evil that he, that he did for us over there. He made things like, like harder and harder by the, by the day. He ends off by talking about the, the, the miracles and the wonders. She also lanu. The, the one that he did for us, that time of the Esa Makos, and a free, uh, eventual freedom. For who? How you fulfill that? As we know, it starts by saying, Arami Oyved Ovi, and she Mokala Pasha until it goes to the end of the Pasha, the Pasha of the Bikoi. Pasha in fact was the Sadoi. Now, says the Rambam, Moisi, Umarish, Bidrash, Parashah, Zo, Parashah, Zemashi. Rambam focuses, he says, you know, there's, a, there's a, a lot in the Haggadah, but here specifically, when we talk here about the Shibur, the Shibur of Mitzrayim in all its details, and how God will say that, the more you can say about it, Parashah, Zemashi, you're praiseworthy. You show a greater appreciation of, of, of all the things that he did for us. Okay. Then it's another detail. Hey, call me Shaloi Omar, Shaloi Shadvoim Ha'elu, the Leil, Kamisha also, Loi Yotze de Chayos. Okay, there's a certain stage after we've done a lesson, not first, just before we drink the second choice. We say, we say and Gabriel says, anybody who didn't actually mention these three uh, uh, items has not fulfilled his duty. 
How do we know that? Pesach Matzu Pesach Matzu Mora. We have to explain the reason why we bring it to Pesach. Why we eat Matzah and why we eat Mora. Pesach, Hashem Shav Pesach HaMokom Baruch Hu Avot Avot Sein Vimitzrayim. Pesach is because HaKadosh Hu jumped over, the serpents who jumped over uh, uh, the houses of our forefathers in Mitzrayim. Shalem HaVar Matzim Zedach Pesach Hu Lashem. This is Korban Pesach is a Korban of jumping over. We're celebrating the fact that HaKadosh Baruch Hu, when he was Geyser, he made a decree that all the Bokhiras in Mitzrayim were going to die. They were Yidin who were living amongst the, the, the Goyim and their houses were excluded. The same time, we eat the Mora because we, we, we want to remember the bitterness of the life that the Mitzrayim, the Mitzrayim uh, imposed upon us. And the Matzah, the matzah is lechem oini, that is the, the matzah of freedom, the bread of freedom. All this that we mentioned above, that's the Haggadah. Halochavu. Bechol doi vodoi chayev odom laharois et atzmoi kilu ba'atzmoi yotzo ato mi shibud mitzvah. In every generation, a person is hired to show himself as if he himself, now, this minute, came out of the slavery of Mitzrayim. Shenema, the Apostle says, Voisonu Hoitzimishom. When a person talks about Mitzis Mitzrayim, being uh, redeemed from Mitzrayim, he's not talking about a historical event which happened so many thousands of years ago. He says, Voisonu Hoitzimishom. It has to be, we were taken out of there. We were in Mitzrayim. Balgo was there. Well, the Ramah continues and he says, Siva Akarish Bohu Batura. You have to say this. Why? You, me, and every other year, we were avoiding in Mitzrayim. Kiiru, Atob Asmacha, Hayis Evet, we are Tosla Hayus in the if, of course, we were never in the time, we didn't have to work as slaves. It has to be ki'ilu. That's what the Ramam says. What the Ramam says at the beginning of this halacha is different from what we say in Nagoli, different from what the, uh, the Mishnah says in Sofim. That's what it says in Nagoli. In every generation, a person has to see himself as if he came out of Mitzrayim. Now, Ramam goes a step further. Ramam says, so if Laharois is actually, has to show himself, Ki'ilu, as if he himself, who Atzmai, not who, who but he himself, you, I, came out of Mitzrayim. And when did I come out of Mitzrayim? This minute, after. Now is the time that I came out of Mitzrayim. So let's try and understand what the Ramam is teaching us. The is saying, you know, there's a big difference in, between telling a story about other people at different times, and especially when it comes to the impression it makes on the children, this is something that happened to our father, our Abba. This is something that happened to our grandfather, something, to, something, to, something we know. And, you know, when did it happen? Just now. Not just now. Because the feeling Oh, relief, gratitude, Tzadosh Baruch is strongest at that time. I once heard from a, 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 a viewer, Rosenbaum, about the and he gets to the Shiva, well, he told me what he does at the Galeel Haseda. He says, you know, he said, tells me that he, he uh, escaped from Hungary in 1956. In 1956, there was a rebellion, and uh, for a certain limited uh, amount of time, the borders were open. It was possible to flee from communist Hungary to free Austria. But the communists were hot on the trail of, uh, of the, uh, the local people. Okay, so he together with a whole lot of other uh, 
Yidin were walking through the night and they, walking, they, they thought this was the right path, walking on and on and on and on. And uh, they typically would get close to a main road, main highway. Where are we? Are we uh, still in Hungary or have we reached safety in Austria? Well, how are we going to find out? Then they heard in the distance there was a motorcycle, uh, motorbike approaching. So they said, one of us will go forward and stop the motorcycles. And from the language that he speaks, we will know, have we reached safety or are we still in trouble? And he remembers that moment that one of the number went forward and started speaking to the motorcyclist in German. And he answered in German. They knew they were now safe. They were in Austria. That is the Yotza Atta. That moment, that moment, suddenly, relief, suddenly, we are now free. We've now left the oppression. And a person on Seder night, Soya, it seems to be, says, this is a heel. The Haro is his Atma. He has to show himself to other people, not just the feel for himself, but people have to see on him, oh, the great simcha, the great relief, the great gratitude that God Bohu, that he's been released from its from its line, from children, it's line. Now, a moment ago, he was a slave, he had to work hard, he was scared the whole time. What are they gonna do to me? Hit me, give me new work, who knows? Take away my children. You can hardly sleep, nothing to eat, and suddenly everything's free, everything's I'm a normal person. And that happened just now. We have to relive and recapture that moment. That is quite an achievement. But this is a Rambam. That's a heel. You have to work on it. Okay. So how do you show this? Rambam gives us an answer. He says, you know, that's all included in the halachas of Leila Seder. The fichor. When a person eats on this night, he's got to eat and drink. He leans like a free man. In those days, right, in the time of the, the Gemara, free men were had a thing in eat. They had this uh, type of uh, sofa, a uh, chaise long, right? It was like a sofa with uh, open at one end. And uh, they used to lean. That's how they used to eat. That's how a, a free man used to eat. A slave couldn't eat like that. I mean, a free man could. And uh, there's a discussion in the portion of the Rambam. The Rambam says you have to eat and drink. Now, what are we talking about here? Are we talking about eating the matzah and drinking the four cases, the four white cups of wine? Or are we talking about eating the meal as well? That's a discussion. I mean, generally, what's generally accepted is when we, what we have to eat that night, what we have to eat the matzah, what we have to drink, we have to drink the four cups of wine, that has to be the, uh, with her saber. Okay, and so he adds, we call echod, echod. Every person, whether it's men or women, have to drink four cups of wine, not less. Four cups of wine, connected the four, the shyness, the four expressions of Buddha. So it says, the salty, the alti, the lakati. Wine, grape juice. Well, the person can't drink wine, then she drink grape juice. But we should be aware there are many possible who hold, wherever possible, whether the doctor allows, your diet allows, um, add a bit of wine to the grape juice because. The white wine, make an alcoholic uh, grape juice, is that is the beverage of free man. Free man can drink, can take, take some nice wine. But I feel only how Spanish means that's not a lo So this halacha translates itself into what do we have to provide the poor man with? Everything that he needs on this night. He needs the matzah. He needs the mar. He needs the four cups of wine, a nice bottle of wine, and he's included into what we are hired to give the, the honor. Shia Kokois, the hand is a ruby. It's every, it's shir, every place is a ruby. Okay. So, 
Sefer Chinuch also talks about the mitzvah of Tipu Yitzhak's mitzvah. Yeah. And he says, Mesapeb inyan etzies mitzrayim, beleil hamisha osa bin Nisan, ko echod lefi tzachus l'shoyim. Before the Rambam says, we have to talk about Yitzhak's mitzrayim on the night of the 15th of Nisan. Each person according to the way he can express himself. So what we're saying is like this. The Haggadah, which is based on Mishnais, in Arab Psochim, in the last period of Seres uh, Psochim, these are the guidelines. But Lemaisa, we are not restricted to any form of words. Every person can express it himself in his own language, in his own way, in tune with his audience. As the, 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 the you know, we haven't spoken about this yet. Hashem is The chiyuv to praise to Hakadosh Baruch to say Halel. I'll call her nisim sheasa lonu for all the nisim that he did for us. Now, Jenema we got to love him for. Upa pishu chachomim the mitzvahs Hakadoshuhi beleil hamish asa benisan shas afilas matzah as we said before. The time for it is the night of the fifteenth of Nisan when we eat in when we went to eat matzah. Okay. Um, the Indian Hamitzah. What's the, the idea? What's the idea behind this mitzvah? She is koy hanisim vayinyonim she ulav vayisin v'lo yet nitzis mitzvah. We should remember the nisim and everything else that went on with our forefathers in the nitzis mitzvah. Everything that went on, shchitas korban pesach. Then the the briskerov held that in addition to talking about what went on in Mitzrayim, there's also a mitzvah to learn Hilchus HaPesa, meaning when everybody's gone to bed at the end of the, the, the Seder night, we still have Fayach. Go and learn. Learn Hilchus Pesa. Learn from the Rambam, learn from the Shulchan Oro. The Ein, the Eich Lokach HaKeriz Barach Mdik Moseinu Mehen. So the, the, the Chinook is very specific. He says, you have to understand here, the Midah Kenegid Midah. HaKosh Baruch avenged us. He avenged whatever the Mitzrayim did to us, where they harmed us. It was a Midah Kenegid Midah. HaKosh Baruch Hu took vengeance. Where do we see this? Where do you see this very strongly? In the Eser Makos. The Ten Makos. It's a central uh, part of the Seder is talking about the Esamakos. Now, we have, we talk about it uh, with, with our finger in the wine, down to Adair, Kin, etc., all the ten Makos, the Tzach, Adash, Bachav, the Simon as well, three groups of three. Well, the last one is four. The Abakas Bukhayas. But, says the Rebbe Chinuch, we have to un- explain, we have to understand how our Kodesh Baruch Hu avenged us. Whatever the Mitzrayim did to us, they got it back. Interesting, what the Maral explains, he says, in these three groups, in every group, you see how our Kodesh Baruch Hu sort of turned up the pressure as the group continued. For example, Dam, Tzafadeh Akim, the Tzach. Dam, where was the blood? The blood was out there in the river. It wasn't in my house. Out in the river, the water turned to blood. Look. It's not very pleasant, but okay, I say that. Oh, you didn't listen. You didn't get the message. Sephardea. Now we're sitting in the frogs. Where do these frogs go? They go everywhere. They come into the house. They come in, uh, into the table, into the bed, into the uh, Chazal tell us in in, in uh, the morning Psalm. These frogs had Messiah's nefesh. They self sacrificed. They jumped into the ovens so that when the Mitzri sat down to dinner at night and the, 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 their noise was terrible, there were frogs croaking the whole time. No peace all around. He thinks, well, at least I can have some supper. Okay. The wife says, Mrs. Mitzri says, the Mr. Mitzri, 
here I made you a nice pie. He takes it hot out of the oven. He puts his knife and fork in there. And what does he find inside? Another frog. What was the middle of the middle here? Well, um, first of all, let's go back to the dam. Dam, the middle connected with uh, the middle of dams, for so inform us that when a Kurdish boy who takes vengeance against the nation, he first punishes their Avoid Zora. And the Avoid Zora of Mitzrayim was the Nile and Paran. Now, this was a very serious abuse of a very generous gift. Yaakov Avinu, when he arrived in Mitzrayim, he gave Paro a bracha. What was the bracha? The bracha was like this. You know, there's not much rain in Mitzrayim. Everybody is dependent on the water for the Nile. They dig irrigation canals from the, from, and they have to lift the water from the, uh, for, from the river. It's a lot of hard work. So Yaakov gave Paro a bracha that when Paro approaches the river, the water should come up to meet him and make life easier. What did Paroi do with that bracha? Oh, he says, you know, I, says, I'm a deity. He says, he's God. Possek says in Yechezkel, Li Yairi Vani Asisim. This is my river. It's my river. I'm the one who made it. I is for these fantastic powers. It comes up. And I made it. As I'll say, I made myself. He was a self made man who worshipped his creator. So, Akarish Bohu tells Moshe Rabbeinu, he says he's not mortal, he's uh, like a deity. Okay, now, excuse me. Every human being needs to use the, um, as American said, the bathroom. He needs to expel certain uh, substances from his body. He eats, right? And he, he digests. And the, the, the liquids and the solids have to be disposed of. So, how, but if somebody is a deity, he doesn't have to do these things. Okay, so how did Paro get away with it? Well, before, very early in the morning, before anybody was around, he used to go to the river and bring it himself. And somehow he managed, that's how he managed to get away with it uh, during the day. So Koshbo says to Moshe Rabbeinu, you now go and confront him when he's going to the, his annual, his daily um, relieving session. To show, we know, you're trying to say you're, you have these old godly powers. You're just a, a, a simple human being, a weak human being like everybody else. Okay. Spade, he said. The frogs, the frogs, says Rata Samson of Hirsch, came to show Paro. And the midstream, these mighty people, they were the most brilliant operators of Toichasatuma. Zel Umazebo Elohim, a who created special powers of Kedusha and correspondingly special powers which could be harnessed through Tumor. And the biggest experts in the world in harnessing Tumor were the Mitzrayim. It says, as I'll say, that it had never happened in the whole history of Mitzrayim that an evident slave had succeeded in escaping from Mitzrayim. He managed to run and run and run. And when he came to the border, suddenly he froze in his tracks and couldn't move anymore. Why was that? There was an, uh, like, uh, the equivalent of an electric fence going all the way around Mitzrayim. A fence of shofim, of black magic, and he couldn't move anymore. And suddenly, now when uh, Clarissa left Mitzrayim, 600,000 men with all the rest, like 3 million people, managed to pass without a problem. So the said, Mr. Samson of Rohish says, a couple of people wanted to teach this arrogant Mitzrayim a lesson. You think you can rule every, everybody, everything in the world. You're the masters of everything that happens in the world. We're going to show you 
You're not the masters of anything. You're not the masters of what goes on in your own house, at your own table, in your own bed. In the food you eat. And how did you do that? How many frogs have you met in your life? Frogs are, are animals who are very shy of human beings. If they notice there's a, a human being in the area, they'll run away. Suddenly, I call a frog who says, with some cell phone here, changed the tether of these beings, these animals, and they suddenly became the most daring of, uh, of creatures. They don't care in somebody's house, in somebody's chair, somebody's table, somebody's bed. They'll go everywhere. Who's the master of the world, Mitzri? You still don't get the lesson? Or Volker says, okay, we'll turn it a bit tighter. Kinim. Kinim are these, the lice that was on the bodies of the Mitzri. Oh, so I'll also explain why Kinim, why lice? Well, these uh, Mitzri had all sorts of ways of making the life of the Yidin difficult, unbearable. So they were employed as street sweepers. They had the whole time that to sweep the streets. And of course, you know, they weren't properly paid uh, like Adam uh, 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 roads over there. It was basically a lot of dust around and a lot of kinning. And they were, were busy with these kinning. It was a very unpleasant work. But Kripal said, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to change afar, all the, the, the soil of the dust of Mitzrayim into kinning. There's no dust now to sweep up. You've got kinim everywhere, kinim all over you. That's a, one group, one group of Dyson markets. And so it continued. All right, wild animals. Wild animals came into Mitzrayim, into the, the cities, the, the towns. They came into people's houses. Now, usually wild animals, they out in the wild. Then they know their place. The occasional, sometimes they meet somebody outside, they can perhaps attack them. But to come into the city and in large numbers, that's again a change in the Teba. And that was again, midah connected midah, measure for measure, because another of the devilish schemes that the Mitzrim uh, conjured up was, we're going to make all these Jewish slaves into hunters. You go and hunt lions, tigers, bears, Snakes, all sorts of dangerous creatures. Okay, Rakhosh Boku. Okay, you don't need the Yidden to do this work. I'm going to send them into town. They're going to come to you. You don't have to go to them. Mida, can I get Mida? Shin. Boy, boils. Now, as I explained, this is mainly um, aimed at the Khartoumi. Mitzrayim, sources of Mitzrayim, because they had given a very harmful, a terrible aid sir, to Parah. Parah was worried about, it seemed that there was the, the, the Mashiach of Israel, the savior of Israel is born. So the Chatim of Mitzrayim said, well, the only way you're going to be able to deal with this is any boy that's born, throw him into the river. Okay. Now, all these Mitzrayim had this terrible type of boil, the worst type of boil, boil which, which never heals, and which is, makes life so uncomfortable. And they were unable to come to Paris court. You, get, you came to Paris court, you gave bad advice, harmful advice, advice which hurt Carly's role so badly. You're now excluded from the court. Borod? What? Fire and water. Two opposites. They don't exist together. But in order to fulfill the rocks in Hashem, you need peace. You had fire and ice together. And this is also a test. A test for the Mitzrayim. For the Mitzrayim, we're, we're, we're told that if you, take, you, you put the animals inside, the animals you put inside won't be harmed. So some people believed and some people didn't believe. Those of you who didn't believe, they lost their, their, their animals. So we see, Akhosh Boku did so much for us. There's much more 
right? We only have an hour to talk about it, <laughs> but there's so much to say on, on the Seder night. In Chutzler, it's, you can have a second Seder night, whatever you didn't say the first night, you can say in the second. After talking about these Nisim and Niflois, these wonders that Hashem did for us, and understanding them, what Hashem was trying to show us and show the Mitzvim, show the world, you see something very surprising. Dayenu. You go through one after the other of the events. Hashem took us to Mitzrayim. That would have been enough. Hashem took us to Hasina and didn't give us the Torah. That would have been enough. Akush Bu gave us a Torah and he didn't take us into Eretz Israel. That would have been enough. We don't need Eretz Israel. What about that? We don't need the base Migdosh. It's a Kassan Sofer. That's not the Pshat. The Pshat is, as we say at the end, we have to understand that there are so many Nisim Belifloi, so many wonders, so much that Akush Bu do to us in this time of Yitzhak Mitzrayim. Everyone was a, 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 a such a wonderful experience, such a nice, such a change in the teva that each one on its own is enough to be machayev us to praise Hakadosh Baruch Hu, to praise Him and praise Him and praise Him. Al achas kamo v'kamo. That's the lashon of the, of the Haggadah. Do we uh, do we have now a heel to praise Hakadosh Baruch Hu because He did all these things? He did all these things. So much He did. He did for us. And that, my boy say, is meant to be the result of the Haggadah. We now are grateful to our Baruch Hu. We now show it's clearly on our face, in our actions, with so much besimcha. Thank you so much for our Baruch Hu. And this has not only really consequences for the Seder nights, we go to sleep. Oh, so happy. Thank you, our Baruch Hu. Says the Sefer Chinuch. The aim in a tema in bo lano mitzvah is rabbis of them. Says the Seder Chinuch. You know, it doesn't end with uh, Seder night. There's so many mitzvahs where we say zechel itzias mitzrayim, zechel itzias mitzrayim. Mitzvahs are said, mitzvahs loyes are said. Right? Positive mitzvahs and negative mitzvahs. Ki yisoid gadol v'amud chazok b'tayu seinu lemun oseinu. This is a very uh, uh, important fundamental point and uh, 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 a pillar of our Torah and Amin Amuna. With our brothers, with our tefillahs, Zechel Yitzhak Mitzrayim. The fish are lanu ois um my face gomo be chidish oilam. So then uh, the, uh, you know, goes through the basic, the fundamentals of Ari Muna. He says, Kiddusha Oilam, who created the world. The Hamachadish is continually renewing the world. There's a a a a a who is there, has always been there, and whatever he wants to do, he can do. If we see it's right, he should change Teva. He, he created the Teva, the Teva keeps on uh, seems to be running as it should, but suddenly things go. Wrong, those strange things happen. A major tsunami. So Hakurush Bo has everything going in a certain way. He can change them to whatever he wants, uh, whenever he wants to. Follow the man when he has money. As he did in Mitzrayim, she shino tivei ha'olam bishvileinu. Did all the, the nature of the world. The world was all topsy turvy. Things were going completely different from the, the, the way they were the whole time. But also lanu oisai simchudashim gedolim atzim. This big show, this wonderful show, these wonders, is nisim. Hello, is there a meshate kol koyfe bechidush oilam? What's the effect? Says the chinuch. The silence. Anybody who denies that first book who created the world, he's, he's constantly being Makabit the world. Makayim he emuna biyadiyas Hashem is one. That keeps the emuna in a first book alive and strong within us. He has shdochoi, 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 he has shdocho
which is what we're doing the whole time. Mimitzrayim ve'altonu, we base our word in the Bisoni. We mentioned a first book who took us out of Mitzrayim in two different ways. He, Goyal, he, he, he took us out of Mitzrayim. And we based our word in Pedisonu. And he took us out of the house of, of slaves. So this is based on, uh, I saw this with Matthew Solomon spoke about this in, 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 uh, in Shmuel and Yeshiv many years ago. It's in the Sefer as well. It's based on the Ramban. <laughs> what do we have here? One thing we have to be thankful to Gersh Boker is he took us out of Mitzrayim. It doesn't stop there. We base our body in Pedisonu. He redeemed us from the house of our body. You mentioned earlier, we would have remained our body in, in Mitzrayim, whether in actually physically or in, uh, mentally in, in attitudes. He bought us, he redeemed us. If somebody redeems a slave, he buys a slave, who's the new master of this slave? First of all. Yitzis Mitzrayim, Sipu Yitzis Mitzrayim. All the details, all the, the wonderful mitzvahs of Leila Seda are meant to lead us to reaffirm our allegiance, our constant commitment to be Avde Hashem Neimonim, faithful servants of our God. We should be Zoicha in its Hashem to bow on the good, building strong and loyal Avodim to Akush Bohu. Akoshem and Afreilich and Pesach. Amen. Koshish Koyach. It was very interesting. Very kosher, very pesach. And we got to uh, Rivka. I shall do. Go to. Okay. Bye bye. Thank you.